Hey guys, it's Gerard Texan from Dayside TV, and I'm a filmmaker, educator, and a digital content creator. Thank you for viewing this video, and you're wondering, with all the cameras that's coming out out there right now with the Canon R5 and R6 and the Sony a7S III, is the Canon EOS R still worth it in 2020? Or even 2021? So before that, we're gonna do a screenshot of the thumbnail for this video, so here it goes! So is the Canon EOS R worth it in 2020 or in 2021? Um, my short answer to that is yes. What I have here is the Canon EOS R with the EF 50mm 1.2 L lens and a adapter for that because I don't have a RF lens. For the past two years I've been using this for um, quick shoots, for my vacation, for um, projects abroad because it's just easier to travel with. Um, I like I want I always want to travel light. I don't want to bring my my big um, cinema cameras. The Canon 50 millimeter 1.2 L lens is really awesome for any type of um, cinematic shots, whether it's photography or video. And the best all you know uh, all round lens right now is the one that I'm shooting with is the 2470 um, 2.8 L lens. I think this is the second version, and it's really good. But the one that I usually bring abroad is my 50 millimeter whenever I just want to focus on photography. A lot of the cameras that's coming out today is very expensive with a lot of great specs. Um, the Canon EOS R is good enough for the ones that's out there that's doing photos and videos. You know, um, first things first is to let you guys know is the fact that it is a DSLR, it's a photo camera first and a video camera second. I noticed when I purchased this camera is um, I decided to do a little bit more photography for my Instagram and for for my wife's Instagram also and um, it's such a joy because I'm a filmmaker, videographer first and photographer second. So a lot of the things that um, I definitely like about this is it's so easy to use right off the box. If you've uh, played around with other Canon cameras, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, it has a really good ergonomics. Like you can definitely hold this really well with just one hand. Um, the grip is great. The thing that I love about this is the swivel screen. Yeah, so the solo screen is awesome to do vlogging if you need to do that or just to see different type of angles. Um, and one thing that I do like about this is when I'm on the go and I don't have time to do uh, my manual setting when I'm taking pictures, it has a good like um, scene intelligent auto settings that I sometimes use because I got to take some pictures really quick and it's pretty good. Um, and it has one of the best autofocus and face detection. So the last couple of videos that I posted in Dayside TV, one was like the Floors Lava comedy skits and then um, a day in life um, video that I posted were shot in the Canon EOS R. The settings that I majority sh shoot with is the 1080 HD and I don't really need 4K right now. So a lot of the cameras or like the camera enthusiasts and fanboys that are out there are like going crazy over 4k and 8k but unless you're doing like really something like super professional that's uh, earns you lots of money and that's outside of like um, digital content from online things like that um, you don't really need 4k if you're doing something for YouTube um, 1080 HD is good enough and the cool thing about this camera, aside from um, it has its 4K capabilities, um, it's it has a, a great codec, the 422 10-bit. Uh, um, it has C-Log, so I could match it with my Canon um, C300. And one thing that I always stuck with Canon was the Canon color sign. It's like everything, it seems more natural, the skin tones, the environment, it's... Yeah, the Canon got it right. So I love what you get out from the camera. Um, definitely the dynamic range um, that you could you get out from it. With even with the C log, you could definitely play around with more colors with that one. The two lenses that I have is I had it such such a long time, and they've been very very useful. And I still don't have any RF lenses because they're a little bit more expensive. But someday, um, if I probably upgrade it to 
an R5 or something maybe I might get a 15-35 um, millimeter lens but we'll see one thing that everybody talks about or at least definitely should consider is the price point right now the R5 costs how much about like four thousand dollars I think it was thirty nine hundred but you know with tax it's gonna be like over five thousand with tax it's gonna be about four thousand dollars um, and the R6 is about twenty five hundred um, but this one right now is you could get it for seventeen hundred brand new or use about like fifteen hundred um, it's still a pretty good deal you know if you need to use 4k it has 4k capabilities but um, I think it's cropped and there's some limitation of the autofocus for the 4k but you know if you're shooting 4k most likely it's more for like cinematic shots and you don't really need autofocus same thing with the crop factor you could definitely just move back and frame your shots and things like that the one that kind of sells me with the newer cameras like the R5 and the R6 is the slow motion because that 1080 HD has 120 frames per second um, for in the R6 and that's something I really want um, and maybe um, someday probably I, I will definitely um, upgrade to that but for now I'll wait until prices drop maybe at a 2000 price point maybe less um, for the R5 um, it's a really great all-around camera um, it has 8K, no crop, 4K, 120 frames per second, and it's it has 40, 45 megapixels for the people that really needs that quality. Um, and it's kind of weird like how the R6 is only 20 megapixel, whereas this one right here is 30 megapixel. So it depends um, if you want to be like more of a um, hybrid, um, hybrid shooter where you shoot um, videos and um, take photos the r6 would be um great but then if you need a little bit more high quality with your photos the, uh this one's pretty good already 30 megapixels yeah so one thing that you know i kind of want to mention is the fact that like a lot of people are complaining about the r5 and the r6 overheating um i mean like when you're using 4k or 8k with those two cameras yeah they will overheat after like 10 minutes or more or whatever but why would you use those for 4K and 8K? Whereas you could just use a similar camera like the Canon C300, C500, or even the C100. Wait, C100 doesn't have 4K. Oh, C200. C200, 300, and 500. Um, use, use those for 4K and it has a fan built in and it's really good if you want to shoot a lot of cin cinematic things and for video. Otherwise, I don't, I, I don't see how people would use an 8K DSLR camera to shoot for more than five minutes. You just need a couple of minutes to shoot whatever you need to shoot for some cinematic, cinematic scenes or B rolls, things like that. I'm not, yeah, I'm not getting. It. I, I I don't get it. You know, I don't get it. But whatever. So that's everybody else out there. But for me, my workload, anything that I need to shoot for a long time, and if I need 4K, my cinema camera could handle that for b-rolls, um, photography, as well as a quick um, HD 1080p um, shoots. That's where I have my um, DSLRs and the Canon EOS R still does its job and I probably won't need to upgrade until, you know, if there's a good price on the R6 or even the R5. So thank you for watching this video. Definitely check out the other videos that I shot with the EOS R and check out the quality. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And do you think it's good enough as a standalone video camera? Do you think it's more like you would just use it for photography or things like that? You know, let me know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Definitely hit that like button because it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, remember to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you will know the next video that we're gonna be uploading on this channel. We also created a Patreon um, account. So all of you guys watching right now, you might like some of the videos that we are uploading on this channel. And we do comedy skits, um, short films, documentary, music videos, 
and now um, some tutorial videos for the people out there that kind of wants to know how to create those type of videos. So we're going to be doing a lot of those things on this channel. So if you like what you see and you want to help support this channel, check out our Patreon and definitely contribute to some, some of the cool stuff that we have out there where you could take part on some of our video production. It will help us out with some of um, the newer content that we're making. And of course, we are making more like serious short films to put up like to festivals that are out there. And if you want to have some type of credit in as a producer or a contributor or, on those projects, check out our Patreon. Um, I'll leave the link in the comment section down below. And you know, any type of amount would definitely help out this channel as well as our um, production. So I think that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching this video and take care and have a nice day.